The Washington Commanders retain a big name and they lose another big name. That's next on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Our Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, everybody. I'm Chris Russell. Good to have you with us on the latest edition of the Locked On Commanders podcast. David Harrison is out tonight, so we are flying solo, but we've got plenty of news to catch you up on as we welcome you in on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. We are your daily podcast of the Washington Commanders. Again, you can catch me on the radio 3 to 7, Monday through Friday, on the flagship station for the Washington Commanders, the Team 980, and the Odyssey app as well. You can catch David Harrison writing for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. And he, of course, is covering the Washington Commanders for that digital website. Meanwhile, Octon Commanders is free and available on all platforms, including right now, If you're watching us on YouTube, and hopefully you are, we want you to subscribe, we want you to sign up, we want you to comment, we want you to join the Army on YouTube and wherever you download your podcast. We thank you for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and watch of the day. All right, so the Washington Commanders go one for two on Tuesday. As of this recording, right around nine o'clock Tuesday night, Eastern time, one for two in terms of major moves, but they lose a very popular piece. So let's start with what they've lost, and that's J.D. McKissick to the Buffalo Bills. Two years, $7 million deal with incentives, according to Adam Schefter, that could take the deal up to about $8 million uh, over the two years. Now, J.D. McKissick is a valuable piece, but a couple of things that we have to keep in mind and why you won't find me screaming about this move. Others are going bananas and thinking that the world is coming to an end. Guys, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I mean, J.D. McKissick helped. He was really good in his first year and the year they won the division title. I'm going to give you those numbers. J.D. McKissick missed the last six games of the year because of a neck injury, a concussion injury that we still don't know the end result of. What we know is he didn't play again after the Monday night football win against Seattle. He didn't play again. And it wasn't just because of concussion protocol. He was concussion protocol at first, and then he was cleared from that, but he still couldn't play because of his neck. We don't know if the season would have extended or or what have you, when he would have come back. We don't know what his end of the year physical told us. We don't know. So here's the deal. McKissick, apparently, according to Ben Standig of The Athletic and Odyssey DC, Washington, as we talked about on a recent episode, said to their free agents, hey, go test the market, go see what you're worth, go see what you can find, but come back to us. And and we'll we'll try and match, and we'll see if we can work it out. According to Standing, Washington did not get that opportunity. According to Nikki Javala of the Washington Post, Washington just didn't make an offer. So I don't know who's right here, who's not, who's giving the information, what have you. Maybe they're both right that Washington didn't indeed make the offer, but it was because they never got the chance to make an offer. Here's what I said on my radio show, and you guys can disagree with me. You can agree with me. I don't know how David's going to feel. He'll be on the next episode solo. Uh, I said this. Look, if Washington determined that J.D. McKissick was not more than a one-year player, a one-year contract offer in a compressed cap space because of the Carson Wentz deal and because of other things that they had to get done, if they determined he was a one-year, what does it matter that they didn't make him a two-year offer or that they didn't make him an offer? Because if he got a two-year offer from somebody else, unless that one year is going to be so far greater than the two years combined, which it wasn't, it doesn't matter that they didn't make him an offer. Why embarrass him if you're going to say, well, give us a chance to match. He gets a two-year up to $8 million deal, and then we're going to throw a one-year $4 million deal? That doesn't make any sense, does it? It really doesn't. I don't see how it makes sense. So I don't think this looks awful from a Washington commander's perspective. 
Number one, I understand they're losing a valuable piece. We'll get to that in a sec. But number two, again, from a contract and a negotiation standpoint, we don't know how his neck is. We don't know um, if they were only willing to go one year. And if they were only willing to go one year, they probably had a reason for that. Again, maybe it was the physicality. Maybe they just didn't see, feel that he was more than a, a one-year player. And, and that's quite possible at the running back position, right? Uh, that being said, J.D. McKissick is going to be missed. There is no doubt about it. We're going to talk about how they're going to potentially replace him in a sec. But McKissick, in 11 games last year, 48 rushes, 212 yards, two touchdowns, 43 receptions, 397 yards, a 9.2 yards per reception mark, two touchdowns. Remember the game-winning or ultimately go-ahead, but game-winning touchdown in Atlanta week four for their second win of the year. Remember the big wheel route catch he had down the sideline in week two to set up Ricky Seals-Jones for the ultimate game-winning or go-ahead touchdown from Taylor Heineke in the first win of the year? Ricky, uh, J.D. McKissick made some big plays. Nobody should question what J.D. McKissick's role and, and production is. The only question is, is health, right, at this point. Uh, again, very productive player, 62 games in his career, 4.4 yards per uh, rush on the ground, almost 1,000 yards rushing, four touchdowns there, 193 career receptions, 1,501 yards, a 7.8 yards per attempt average or yards per catch uh, average, I should say, seven touchdowns. And again, a bunch of those coming with the Washington Commanders slash football team slash Redskins. In 2020, his first year, so technically he didn't play for the Redskins. I should clarify that. He only played for the football team, and now, well, he's not going to play for the Commanders, but you, you get my point. 16 games in 2020, Ron Rivera's first year, he signed a two-year deal. 85 rushing attempts, 365 yards and a touchdown, a 4-3 yards per attempt average, and check this out, in case you forgot, 80 catches for 589 yards, 7.4 average, and two Touchdown. So there is no doubt J.D. McKissick is, again, valuable, is going to be missed. There is zero doubt about that. So how does Washington try and go about replacing him? Well, they could go out in the free agent market. I don't see that. They certainly can draft some guys. David and I are going to get into that as we get closer through the draft, uh, to the draft and away from free agency or away from the bulk of free agency. But Antonio Gibson was, a, of course, a natural receiver at Memphis, lined up in the slot, lined up outside, lined up in the backfield, wasn't really a running back. Clearly, that's what he's been over his first two years here in Washington. But in order to keep him healthier and to take advantage of his college experience and his dual set ability, He's had 44 catches, uh, 44 targets and 52 targets in his first two NFL seasons, 36 and then 42 receptions in 2021 as a, as a running back receiver, right? 247 in his rookie year, 294 in receiving yards last year, and three receiving touchdowns in 2021. Clearly, Washington is trying to use him more as a receiver. So that had to be some part of the thought process here. And on top of that, not only is he a natural receiver and productive, but he also would stand a reason to stay a little healthier if he's not constantly running between the tackles and taking on the beating that he takes because he runs downhill. He's physical. He has ball security issues. We all know that. But he also has gotten banged up. Remember the toe in year one that cost him a game and really changed the trajectory of his performance. And then he was dealing with the shin and uh, the knee and some other things in year two. So try and keep him healthier, try and maximize his ability, his talent. Well, then if you're going to use him more in that role, fine. You need a running back. Well, Jarrett Patterson clearly is a part of the mix, the undrafted rookie out of the University of Buffalo, the local product. Well, you say, well, Jarrett Patterson's, you know, he is he a dual threat guy? Maybe not. Maybe 10 catches for 73 yards, but he did have 68 carries, 266 yards. Uh, that's sub four yards. Uh, and two touchdowns as a rushing back. Now, is he at every down back? No. Might you have to go out and try and bring in a Melvin Ingram or somebody like Sure. But you could also draft a guy, again, as we kind of touched on maybe a Brees Hall from Iowa State, somebody like that, the kid from Notre Dame. Again, David and I will get more into that as we go along. Clearly, they are going to have to fix some things 
in the running back rotation in order to replace J.D. McKissick. But I don't have a major, major problem with J.D. McKissick uh, being let go. All right, quickly, they do bring back Bobby McCain. And Bobby McCain was a priority re-sign because of what they don't have at the safety position. In other words, they're going to let Landon Collins officially go on Wednesday before the league year opens up. They have Cameron Curl. We don't know about DeShazer Everett's status. Even if he's with the team, he's likely going to be suspended. Derek Forrest was a rookie. Troy Apke didn't work out uh, at safety. And Jeremy Reeves is just probably a guy, a Jag, not a Jacksonville Jag. That's Brandon Sheriff. Bobby McCain had a pick six to close out the year, a 70.9 overall grade via PFF, an 87.5 passer rating allowed, 17.9 per reception, but four interceptions, 10 missed tackles, 63 total tackles. Listen, it was mostly uh, a tale of two halves for Bobby McCain. First six games were pretty dreadful, pretty awful, miscommunication, missed tackles, bad angle, uh, popping off of the media for no reason, a lot of bad. Bobby McCain settled down. Once they started moving Landon Collins out and having basically Cameron Curl and Bobby McCain together as the two safeties, it was much better. Again, not perfect, but much better. And I think Bobby McCain was a priority re-sign. They needed more help at free safety than they did at running back. And if you can only get one of those two guys, to me, the decision was easy. It was McCain over McKissick. If you can get two out of these three guys, McCain, McKissick, and DeAndre Carter, I was going to put McKissick three and DeAndre Carter and McCain one or two, and probably McCain one. Uh, but ultimately, they are talking to DeAndre Carter. We'll see if they bring him back before the start of the league year uh, or after, or if they lose him. But clearly, if you can bring back two of those three guys, you're doing I guess as reasonably good as you possibly can. More on McCain, more on McKissick as we go through the coming days right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Who's next for the Commanders and how did those Jaguars get a bargain basement deal on Brandon Sheriff? That's next right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Guys, this is the time of the year that everybody's pretty much given up on New Year's resolutions. Some have some. I, I got to get back to the gym, I'll be honest with you. But between doing this uh, four-hour daily radio show, the NCAA tournament, baseball, I, I just can't keep up. I just can't get out of my computer. So I've got to eat better and healthier. And one way to do that is Built Bar and Built Puffs. Don't forget about them. Oh, yeah. Some great flavors. I love the banana cream pie. Oh, so good. Chocolate and banana together and marshmallow. Woo! Chocolate. Uh, coconut marshmallow and as well the cinnamon churro are the flavors for the Built Bar Puffs. And of course, you know all about the Built Bars. They're awesome too. Lots of cool flavors. They're always coming out with different stuff. David loves the mint brownie. I love anything with peanut butter, but I love more than just the peanut butter brownie uh, Built Bar uh product. So here's what we want you to do. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15 for get, uh, to get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, we welcome you back to the Locked On Commanders podcast. I'm Chris Russell. Again, David Harrison out for this particular episode. He will return with a solo episode on the next edition of the Locked On Commanders podcast, where we thank you for making us your first listen and your watch each and every day. Make sure you follow the Locked On NFL podcast, where Locked On NFL experts are covering the biggest stories around the National Football League every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, where, of course, we uh, are now up and running. And we uh, would love for you to subscribe, follow us there. Uh, and, of course, your traditional audio listening methods. No compensatory picks for the Washington Commanders. That was expected this year because of the Curtis Samuel and William Jackson, the third signings last year. They should get at least a third round compensatory pick next year, right around 100, maybe 98, 99, somewhere in that range for losing Brandon Sheriff, Tim Settle, and J.D. McKissick. They'll probably get a third and a fourth. Maybe it'll be a third and a fifth. We'll have to see how that works. I cannot believe how short the overall structure of the Brandon Sheriff deal was. There was no bad team franchise tax. David and I talked about this on the last edition of the Locked On Commanders podcast. 
I thought for sure Sheriff was going to get at least a four-year deal, maybe even a five-year deal. I thought four-year deal, well, he's probably going to get $17, $18 million a year. So what is that? Um, you know, $70, $72 million on a four-year deal. On a five-year deal, maybe he would get 85. Maybe it would be north of 85. I I thought for sure there would be a bad team, bad franchise tax, and instead, eh, nothing. Brandon Sheriff couldn't wait to get out of Washington, or he really, really, really loves himself some Phil Rauscher. And that was a great job by David to point that out. I forgot about that. But still, Phil Rauscher alone isn't enough. I mean, you got to get paid. I'm surprised. Here's the deal. Brandon Sheriff signed a three-year, $49.5 million deal. Now, before we break down the other numbers, it is important to note, right, that Brandon Sheriff could theoretically sign another two or three or four-year deal somewhere else, I guess. But why you wouldn't try and get a four-year deal, why you would sign so quickly in Jacksonville, I don't know if you couldn't get a fourth year. Forget about the fifth year, the fourth year. Now, sometimes those fourth years don't mean a whole lot, but I mean, still, overall, you'd get more money and guaranteed money, and you'd have a better chance of having some stability. They could basically get out of it after two years for about $33 million. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? Brandon Sheriff for the last two years made 15 million and 18 million. You combine those, two years, 33 million, fully guaranteed at the time of signing, which is in Jacksonville, he gets 30 million, according to all the different contract source uh, sites, 30 million fully guaranteed at signing. He gets basically 33 million in practical guarantees. If there's some roster bonuses or whatever it is that make up that extra 3 million, but fully guaranteed, he only gets 30 million. So it's less than what he got the last two years from the Washington Commanders. The cap hits 2022, 7.7 million for the Jacksonville Jaguars. 2023, it bumps up to 20 million. There's an out ramp and an off ramp after that. And then 2024, if he's still on the Jacksonville roster, $21.5 million. So Sheriff averages $16.5 million per year. Tim Settle's numbers for the Buffalo Bills, the two-year deal with a base value, according to Mike Garofolo, of about $9 million and a max value of about $10.6 million, which will be based on playtime incentives and all that. So basically right around an average of four and a half to five million, depending on whether he hits in- incentives. And clearly he's going to play more than he did here in Washington down to, uh, again, just 210 snaps last year, which was weird when you consider all of the depth issues Washington had. All right. Who else is coming back for the commanders and who isn't? That might be a more important question. And how did Washington lose on Tuesday without even playing? That's next. All right, this is the Locked On Commanders podcast. Good to have you guys with us as we wrap up shop right here on a Wednesday edition. So Tyrod Taylor signed with the New York Giants. He makes them much, much better, in my opinion. The Giants had two top 10 picks and a better GM and head coach structure than they've clearly had. Watch out. Everybody thinks it's the Eagles and the Cowboys jockeying for the first spot, and whoever doesn't win it will be the second spot coming up, and Washington clearly third. Not clearly anything. Not with the Giants having two top 10 picks, some talent already that they've acquired, and also, again, a better head coach, we think, and and general manager structure, right? I mean, hard to kind of not be better than Dave Gettleman and Joe Judge. So clearly, keep in mind, that is a possibility for the New York Giants to be better than the Washington Commanders, unless Commander Carson is something special. And we all have to hope that he is somehow and some way. All right, guys, I want to wrap up this particular edition of the Locked on Commanders podcast with this. So Troy Apke is coming back to the Commanders. Yay! A one-year, $1.2 million deal, a move that many fans are going to see as completely unnecessary and repulsive, especially considering that it cut cost them maybe Tim Settle, it cost them maybe J.D. McKissick, or at least fans are going to try and rationalize it that way. It didn't. $1.2 million, not a lot of money, even though the Washington commanders don't have a lot of money. Uh, Again, not a lot of money. And here's why it's an important 
contract. And here's why it's an important deal. First of all, Troy Apke is a core special teamer with tremendous speed, right? But we know he can't play safety. We know he's very much a, a marginally developed corner and still has a long way to go if he's even going to be somewhat decent there. Probably not, right? But you can play in this league, core special teamer. Look at Matthew Slater. And I'm not saying Troy Apke is Matthew Slater, but you get my point. You can have a long career in this league as a core special teamer. I think he had six or seven special teams tackles uh, last year. Apke, again, great speed. But here's why you're wrong if you're upset about this. Washington, again, could very well be losing to Shazer Everett. We don't know his legal status. We don't know his NFL playing status. And they could lose Cam Sims, a couple of core special teamers. Remember, you have to have people that can cover kicks. You have to have people that can tackle and punt return. You have to have guys like Troy Apke. It's important, especially considering who they might not have coming back next year. And also veteran interior offensive lineman Tyler Larson will return to the team, according to John Kime of ESPN, on a one-year deal. Also, Washington not going to. Uh, tender a restricted free agent offer to quarterback Kyle Allen. So that would seemingly end his time here. And they did tender exclusive rights free agent tags to Bunmi Rottini and Daniel Wise, two guys on the defensive line, maybe with the thought of, hey, we're losing Tim Settle. We might have to make another move, maybe Payne, maybe Ioannidis. We'll see what happens with that. We need guys along with James Smith-Williams and others on that defensive line. All right, I want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and watch of the day. Come on back for the next episode. Again, David Harrison will be flying solo after free agency officially starts, and we will be back together before the week is out. Now make your second listen of the day, the Locked On NFL Draft podcast with Ryan Tracy, former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker. They bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. If you have a question or a topic you want to hop in, I know we got a couple of voicemail. We're going to get to it. Locked on Washington Commanders at gmail.com. That's locked on Washington Commanders at gmail.com. Or call in and be a part of the show via the voicemail line, 301-615-3577, 301 615 Seven. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Again, thanks for joining us. We're free and available on all platforms. David Harrison back on the next episode. For David, who's covering the Washington Commanders for SI.com's Fan Nation, I'm Chris Russell, one half of the Russell and Ned Hershow on the Team 980 in Washington, D.C. and the Odyssey app worldwide. We'll be back right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast.